Hey, it's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug, and today we're going to talk about sheep. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm Doug with Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I've been drinking. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I'm Doug with Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. And today we're going to talk a little bit about sheep and what sheep we recommend for the homestead and um, just answer a few questions that we seem uh, to get a lot of. Okay, um, On our homestead, one of our philosophies is we want to try to keep it as simple as possible on the homestead. Because we don't want to feel like we're slaves to the homestead or that it's wearing us out or anything like that. So when we decide on what animals that we're going to go with, we want to try to find something that is pretty self-sustainable, right? That they're going to forage for their own food, of course, except when it's snowy outside. And that, um, you know, they're going to require the least amount of hands-on, all right? So when we thought about the sheep, uh, we gave consideration to the fact that, A, we live off-grid totally with no solar power. And we didn't want to get into um, like a lot of shearing, okay? And so when we decided what kind of sheep we were going to get, one of those considerations was shearing. And then the other one was um, that we were going to use our sheep for meat. So we wanted to make sure that we picked a breed um, that was a good meat producer, that put on meat relatively quickly, and that had uh, relatively large lambs right off the, you know, right off the bat, okay? Uh, so when we went with the sheep, we went with the hair sheep. The particular uh, breed of hair sheep that we went with is called the Katahdin, K-A-T-A-H-D-I-N. And they are like what you would consider a tropical um, sheep. So they're super uh, good when it comes to the heat and humidity. Okay, so we live in the Midwest and we do, um, you know, six, eight weeks out of the year, we, uh, have a lot of heat and humidity and these sheep do very well in that type of um, climate okay uh, you know just making sure they have fresh water and of course they have plenty to eat with um, grazing all right so also with the Katahdin's um, with the hair sheep we didn't have to worry about docking tails if you have a wool sheep you have to worry about docking tails um, so their poop and stuff doesn't get clogged up in the back there because they are so woolly and so that's one less maintenance item that we had to do. And also, um, with this particular uh, type of sheep, we, didn't have to, we don't have to worm a, a lot. We don't worm our sheep at all, ever. Um, if every once in a while we'll give them some DE, uh, Diametrous Earth, uh, we link a video right there about one of our DE videos. And that um, kills the parasites in them, and we have a, a very good success uh, with using that type of regimen uh, for parasites. And again, these um, sheep are more resistant to the parasites and also a lot depends on your crop ro or your um, rotation of your animals right um, if you have them feeding right over the top of the same spot all the time you're going to have more health issues our animals have a wide area we have 11 acres and we have a wide area pinned off just for the sheep um, for them to move around and not eat right on top of themselves all the time so we try to rotate them every 10 days or seven days or however you know, it depends on how they're eating it to give the other land time to grow back up and then uh, keep moving them around so they're not eating over the top of their feces which promotes the growth of the parasites okay um, another thing about the type of sheep that we went with the katahdin is we've never had to trim their feet uh, the, the feet are like this you don't want them to grow like this or start pointing out then you have to trim them okay now we've had our sheep for over three years and we've never trimmed their hoofs at all, okay? Um, so that's another benefit. That's what you, why you call them an easy keeper. They don't require a lot of maintenance. Um, they're pretty self-sufficient. As long as you make sure they have their water and everything's good to go, they're going to produce meat for you and babies. Um, we keep about 10, maybe 15 ewes, one ram, okay? One ram can service about 15 to 30 ewes in a 34 day cycle. So that means that you know in 34 days, he'll get around to all the um, ewes that we keep here. And um, you know, it works out pretty good for us. Uh, they say typically or whatever by the books that you should have um, one or two ewes 
for every acre of land, okay? And like I said, we have 11 acres here. We have a pretty good section uh, put away for them, uh, you know, so they can do their thing. So sheep take about 140 to 150 days um, to lamb out, to have their babies, about five months. And another good thing about the hair sheep that we have, the Katahdins, they're known um, to birth, you know, they could birth twice in a year. We've had it happen a couple times, and a lot of that depends on how you're managing them as well, right? Um, if you're leaving the ram out with the ladies all the time, like we do, you'll have a higher probability of that happening. Um, or if you just introduce the ram when you want to introduce them uh, to control the cycle a little more, um, you know, you might not see uh, two times in one year unless you're on top of it, okay? So that, you know, that's pretty good too. Uh, two times in one year is pretty good. So in case you didn't know, a female um, sheep is called a ewe, a baby is called a lamb, and then the male that's in, you know, uh, full function is called a ram, okay? Typically, you eat lamb, which is up to about a year old. Really, it's like eight months to about a year, 13 months, right around in there, Um Depending on their weight is how we kind of go by it here. Um, some put on weight faster than others, so we just try to, um, you know, keep an eye on how they're uh, putting on weight, okay? Um, so anything over a year is what you call mutton, and then that meat uh, just might need a little more seasoning or a little more marinating, but it's perfectly fine to eat. Um, I've talked to people, you know, some people that like it, some people that don't. And, uh, but I would imagine, you know, it's just like with anything, uh, for us, we don't have any experience eating mutton because, uh, since we've been raising sheep, we've always eat the lamb. And when we were city dwellers, uh, city folk, we always, uh, ate leg of lamb. So it was always lamb that we were in. We don't have any experience with mutton. So, uh, but I'm just telling you, um, if we had to eat it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. We would just marinate it and dress it up a little bit. Uh, just like some people think venison is gamey or stuff. I mean, there's things you can do to this uh, type of meat uh, to calm it down a little bit as far as flavor goes and to make it a nice experience. Um, now, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, uh, when Roosevelt was president, they used to use uh, sheep um, to mow the White House lawn. Why don't they do that today, right? They're, they're, the government's telling us to be green all the time, um, and yet they're probably hiring uh, big fossil fuel companies to come in and cut the grass with uh, modern mowers and gas and, and all this kind of stuff. But I digress. I just thought you'd like to see that picture. <laughs> Life expect. Uh oh. You guys just got cuckooed. That was a long one. Uh, life expectancy, uh, you know, sheep is kind of like a, a dog, a large dog. Uh, 10 to 12 years. Uh, the Guinness Book of World's Record, uh, I wrote down here, has uh, one sheep that lasted to be 23 years. It was a merino, a merino sheep, 23 years old. But normally they have the life expectancy of like a large dog, you know, 10 to 12 years. Um, so... Yeah, so, the, I mean, we, we keep our sheep probably like five or six, and then we cycle them out, okay? Because uh, the longer you hold them and you breed them, uh, you could start running into problems like prolapse, propolapse, whatever that is. Um, it's when they have a, a baby and then they get turned out, you know, inside out kind of. So I don't want to, we don't want to have any of that kind of stuff going on. <laughs> so I've seen it, uh, and it's a bummer deal, but so I, I try to, I'm going to try to cycle them out. You know, like I said, we've had ours for three, four years right now. So pretty soon I'll be cycling them out. And then if we, when we have our um, ewes have their lambs, if they have like too many females, we don't let the ram breed his daughters, okay? Some people are um, cool with that. They'll go one time uh, ram breeding the daughter, but we don't do that here. Um, I know some people that do, but they say that if you do that twice, if you, if you breed to the granddaughter, then you're going to turn into a, it's going to turn into a lot of health problems and a lot of genetic problems. But uh, as for us, what we do on our homestead is we don't do that at all. If we have too many ewes and we're trying to thin the herd, uh, word of mouth, Craigslist, the local sale barn, or we'll just butcher them, um, so it's not a problem. Some rams we can sell if they're really good, uh, healthy uh, stock, and then um, you know we just try to move them along. We don't try to keep them around. Okay. So Stacy's going to walk through the door right now while I'm taping this video.
Say hi, Stace. Everybody heard you come in. Say hi. Hi. So, yeah, that's about it. I mean, if you guys got any questions about sheep, just leave them in the comments below. Um, I just want to drop off a quick video talking about the kind of sheep that we have and, uh, you know, our thoughts behind them. Just make sure if you're starting a homestead that you are... <laughs> I just got photo bomb that you are, uh, you know, trying to keep in mind that you want easy keepers. Like when we did the alpacas, alpacas are not easy keepers, um, especially where we live. If you live in the mountains, they could be more of an easy keeper, uh, but then the shearing uh, turned into kind of a negative for us. So, you know, if you need any alpaca fiber, we still have plenty. Just hit us up in the comment section, send us an uh, email, and we'll be glad to help you out. Uh, we're blowing it out of here. We just want to get it out of the house. So, um, Anyways, hope you guys found that somewhat informative, and uh, you know we'll check you on the next episode. This is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. I'm Stacy. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.